Today we will be reviewing the CYC Ride Control app, available for both iOS and Android devices. We're going to download the app and make sure Bluetooth is enabled. All right. With CYC, the Bluetooth chip is actually inside of the speed sensor. So in order to connect, you'll need to have the motor powered on and have the speed sensor connected. The speed sensor dongle actually has a little light that shines blue if you're connected, red if it's in speed sensing mode. So on startup, agree to any requests that the app has made for access. Yes, yes. So from this front screen, there's actually two ways to interact. The Eye of Sauron is actually preview mode so that you can explore the app without connecting to a motor. Go ahead and tell it to disconnect. Press the big red search button if you don't already see your motor. It should pop up under select your device. Tap that bad boy and connect. And we're in. CYC refers to this view as the dashboard because it's actually an active performance readout and an alternative to your motor display. So top to bottom here, we've got a few interactives, but let's break this down. Top left, there's a warning sign for error codes. If you've got to do any troubleshooting for your motor, this is the best place to check. You'll get a better description here than your display will offer. Top right is just showing if Bluetooth is connected. Red is yes, gray is no. If we press that, it will disconnect us from the motor. The red circle here can be tapped to alternate between street and race modes. You can also change between modes on your display. We'll expand on what these options are capable of in a moment. This red box here is to set the display in horizontal orientation. And the counterpart switches us back. Swiping left on this vertical screen gives us the stats that were also available on the horizontal option. The non-interactive components here are all live monitors, speed, assist level, battery. Human power tracks your contribution in watts and motor power tracks the motor's contribution. Cadence RPM is reading the rotations per minute of your legs. These I feel are pretty self-explanatory. This big red dashboard button represents our current interface. Clicking settings will let us get under the hood for customization. From here, you can tap this piece of paper in the top right corner to download the application's manual. This is a more thorough resource than this video and is a great companion. It has expanded descriptions for each of the settings and stats. Okay, so let's start at the top. You can name your motor for this device using edit. This is just saved locally. It won't go to any other uh, cell phones. Your serial number is unique. That's right here. Okay, so let's go into general. This allows us to set temperature units, speed units, or just restore the entire device back to factory standards. Pressing save will preserve any settings. If you don't press this on each page, you will lose your changes. Okay, next up is modes and levels. This is likely the page that inspired you to find this video. Here we can configure throttle assist power, pedal assist power, and maximum speed limit. We can configure profiles for different regions in the world, and we can choose what mode that the uh, bike starts up in, whether it's street, race, or just continues from what you had it at previously. Now, there's separate configuration pages for street and race. The beauty of this is that they can be whatever we want them to be. Class one, class two, class three, or unrestricted. The sliders here represent your low, mid, and high assist levels. If you have three levels set up on your display, this is one to one. If you have five or nine levels configured, this is averaged across them. So these gradations give us a pretty good idea of what to expect. If we put everything to low, everything to this uh, 300 that's on low, all of our settings would perform the same. 
So you wanna find a smooth grade in here that feels good when you're switching between settings. Um, this throttle power level is the maximum output of the throttle. The torque is the amount of torque you'll receive from, uh, from the throttle. As you can see, everything is a lot higher in race mode by default. And make sure to press save to save anything you've configured. Okay, moving on, the throttle page. So throttle control here lets us turn our throttle on and off. Ramping time determines how long it takes to reach peak power at full open. Now it's not recommended to go below 150 milliseconds here. Input dead band allows us to configure how far the throttle has to travel before activating. Don't go super low here or you'll surprise yourself with uh, light taps. Throttle calibration is for use when you use a third party throttle instead of the CYC recommended deluxe thumb throttle. This helps you tune everything, but you shouldn't need this if you just buy a standard kit. Now, if you hear any buzzing from your motor after messing with this, raise the minimum voltage to 1.0. Uh, that will get rid of that buzzing. I also don't recommend going super low on the minimum voltage. Uh, press save to save changes. All right, and then we're gonna go to pedal assist. Here we can turn pedal assist on and off. Um, this first setting is torque sensor sensitivity. This setting actually feels like the slider is backwards. You want to raise the bar if you want it to be more sensitive to pressure. Now there's a sweet spot here for everyone. We have it a little bit more turned up on ours. The default setting is an excellent starter, but if you really want to fine tune your feet, this is where you start. Uh, power ramp up time, just like with the throttle. This is the time to full power under full engagement. How long do you want to pedal before you're maxing out your assist setting? Longer times will feel more natural. And then uh, motor assist factor. So this setting is for how hard you need to pedal in order to reach full power. This is still tied to the power ramp up time. If you start pumping, you'll hit this with default settings. Adjusting this will allow you to get the same kind of output without as much effort. And then if we scroll down this uh, advanced section, so cadence start, this is to prevent you from accidentally engaging the motor when you are stopped or resting your feet. If you want a more natural engagement, you can disable this. Just be aware of resting your feet on the pedals. If you're doing a lot of technical riding, this may be worth exploring and tuning your other settings around this setting to your liking. Um, the pedal backwards cutoff. This is just like brake cutoffs for your pedals. You rotate backwards, it cuts the motor. Just another safety redundancy there. Uh, the baseline voltage setting is for Gen 2 kits. Don't change this setting unless you're using Gen 2. Gen 2 torque sensor calibration is only for X1 Pro Gen 2 or X1 Stealth Gen 1. Use this if you're upgrading. If you're using any other models, leave this alone. And then uh, we're gonna save and we will go to peripherals next. So wheel diameter. This is where you set the size of the wheel you have here, specifically the one with the speed sensor installed. Uh, wheel magnets. Most of you will only have one. Adding more can give you a more accurate speed reading, but for the vast majority of users, this is a niche setting. Uh, did you install brake sensors? If so, you turn them on here. If uh, the signal seems backwards, like uh, when you got your hand off the brake, it's cutting the motor, do the inverted brake sensor signal, it will fix that. Uh, motor direction. Uh, don't touch this. This is a password protected setting. If this needs to be changed, you'll usually hear the motor winding up, but no chain movement. Speak to your dealer or CYC. If you're experiencing this issue, we will get you help. And make sure to press save to save anything you've configured. And then battery, series of cells. This helps CYC know what voltage you're running at. You do need to set this. Um, it's got a full rundown of different voltages and their uh, cell configurations. Minimum voltage, this is important. Most batteries will have a BMS or battery management system that handles this, but for those without 
or those who want some redundancy, this setting prevents you from going below your battery's safe threshold. Some basic parameters would be 36 volt batteries have a 32 volt minimum, 48 volt batteries have a 41 volt minimum, 52 is 42 and 72 is 64. And then we will save here. Then moving on to firmware, you likely won't ever need to do this. However, if new features come out, you'll see an update button and you can use this to flash the firmware to your device. Make sure your e-bike battery is charged and will be free from any interruptions. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any remaining questions on how to operate the application or you're just looking for some help with specific settings for your riding style, please feel free to reach out to us through the comments or you could book a consultation with us through our website. Um, that's electrifybike.com and we'll see you next time.